DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from Coast to Coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! You'll never take him alive. Oh, that's me. DeSoto, Plymouth. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra hundred dollars. Roger, we have Constance Watt and Pat DeLeone waiting to talk to you. cut out the clowning and give us the names of these people. What? No, no, don't you start that <laughs> Abbott and Costello routine. Uh, we have Constance Watt. Well, who's on first? This is the... <laughs> well, welcome to your betcha life. Well, that's Pat DeLeone and, and yes. Constance say Watt. Say the secret there. word yeah. and you make an extra... Take home an extra fifty dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Constance Watt and Pat D. Leone. Is that right? Yes, now, Connie, you. I'll start with you because I, I, I want to find out what's what. Now, where are you from? Uh, well, great you, I'm from... Uh, what's that? Uh, I'm from Aberdeen. Oh, I thought that was him talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Aberdeen, Scotland, great you're, you're from Scotland, no? Oh. Uh, that's the, the city where uh, Alexander Fleming, the man that discovered penicillin, and um, it's also called the Granite City because the buildings are all more or less uh, <clears throat> made of granite. And it's called also the Silver City by the Sea. I see. Well, it's got a lot of names, huh? <laughs> Does, let me ask you something, Connie. Does your husband also have a bar? He uh, most certainly has. Uh, uh, and is uh, it as delightful as yours? Oh, more so. You both have <laughs> burrs, eh? Well, you know what they say about the Scots, burrs of a feather stick together. <laughs> <laughs> Usually around the heather. <laughs> now, let's see. You're uh, Connie DeLone, De Leone. Pat DeLeone. Oh, Pat DeLeone, yes, yeah. Sure. And uh, your name is uh, Constance Watt, huh? Yes, sir. Oh. Like Groucho, that's and, uh, my name. Are you Irish, Pat? Well, my first name is Irish. My last name is French, DeLeone. But I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> well, that clears that up, man. Now, if you're Italian, how did you get a name like Pat? Oh, Pasquale is really my name, but Pat is uh, my Irish name. My mother comes from Ireland. Oh. Yes, sir. And your, your name Long is? Long Island. <laughs> well, do you often tell jokes like that one? Uh, oh, I just add lib and, and, and if and you then. don't, why do you single me out for punishment? I just add lib. Oh, you're an ad liver, huh? Ad lobbyist, to put it. Ad lobbyist. Are oh, you a lobbyist? Are uh, you a professional comedian? No, sir. I'm a waiter, a dumb waiter at the Abruzzi restaurant, <laughs> Sunset La Brea. Well, what kind of a place is Abruzzi's? Uh? Well, it's a Italian restaurant. We serve. Uh, Italian food, we serve anybody or anything. <laughs> you serve anybody, anything? Anything, yes, sir. Well, what is your specialty? Well, we have what they call a salt and bocca, which is a stuffed veal roll with mozzarella cheese, Italian ham, that's the waiter, and mushroom <laughs> sauce. I like the way he slips those in there. <laughs> Well, you're a nice couple, and it's been fun talking to you two. And as you walk down life's lane together, I'm sure you'll be very happy. We had that left over from the show last week. <laughs> All right, now let's play You Bet Your Life. Now, you have chosen, as your category, general information. Is that right? Yes, sir. A great man, wasn't he, general information? He sure was. How was it you didn't say that? General Mills' brother, isn't it? Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions. And General Electric's brother, too. Along with your connections. Yes, and if you miss... <laughs> brings me back to what's what. <laughs> well, now, if you miss two in a row, you're through. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. What was the name of the knot that Alexander cut with his sword? I don't mean Alexander's ragtime band. Knot or nut? Knot. No? Nut. No. Nut. The name of the knot that Alexander cut. Sorry, you got me there. It's nut. a famous saying. That means getting through a difficult uh, situation. Okay. Wouldn't be lover's knot. Well, that's pretty difficult, but it isn't the, uh, the right answer. It's the Gordian knot. 
And you have one wrong, and don't get the next one wrong, or the game is over for All you. All right. Now, what kind of an animal do you associate with a slave and So, What kind of an animal? Lion? 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 Lion is right. Lion is right. Well, you're on the track now. You have one right. You've been lying all evening. Why didn't you say that? <laughs> all right, now, who was the Dutch leader of New Netherlands who officially uh, bought Manhattan from the Indians for $24? Some town named after him there. No. Well, it's Peter Minuet or Peter Minuet. Peter Minuet. You Peter have... Minuet. <laughs> and you have you one not... <laughs> yeah. it's a beef. You may not believe it, but you happen to be talking to Peter Minuet right here. I play the part of me... Peter Minuet in Warner Brothers' The Story of Mankind. And if you rush to your nearest theater, you can probably see it right now. now but then... you still have one wrong. <laughs> well, that's besides the point. I don't think they're interested in that. So don't get the next one wrong. All right, <clears> now, <throat> what do you call the groups in Washington who are paid to persuade legislators to vote for or against a bill? Group of people that are paid to... What do you call the groups in Washington who are paid to persuade legislators to vote for or against a bill? Well, they're well, lobbyists. They well, they have two wrong in a row, Groucho, That's so the uh, game is over. All right. They're through? Mm -hmm. Well, here it is. I'm going to... Uh, you get this one right, and you can win $100. Who wrote the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin? Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin is right. Sorry you didn't win, win more, but thanks anyway for being on with us. You bet your life. An awful nation. Thank you. Well, Groucho, Mr. Arthur Morales is waiting to talk to you. Miss Partner is a special guest, Mrs. Zetta Wells, who, with her late husband, Carveth Wells, has explored just about the whole world. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet. Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and take home an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Zetta Wells and Arthur Morales, huh? Zetta, let's start with you. What kind of a name is Zetta? Oh, I wish you'd tell me. I've never known. I asked Mother, and she said it came from Holland, a great aunt. Where are you from, Zetta? Well, I was brought up in Norfolk, Virginia. And then where'd you go from there? Well, from there I went to school in Paris. Oh. And your name is, uh, is Arthur Morales? Is That's that right. Morales, is that the way you pronounce it? Morales. Morales? That's right. Where Let's... are you from? Arturo, I suppose that's the way you That's say right. it. That's right. I'm from Puebla de Los Angeles, in, oh. Me in all Mexico. In all Mexico? That means the city of the angels. Uh, do you have a job, Arturo? A very sweet one, yes. I'm a pastry chef at the Balaguer's pastry shop in the valley. And what, what do you do on your job? Oh, mostly fresh pastries, decorated cakes. Mm. Things like that, fancy things. Mm. Did you go through school in, oh, yes. in Mexico? Oh, I... yes, I did, but I quit to join a revolution. Well, who wouldn't, huh? <laughs> they had a revolution in school? What was the most revolting? Well, uh... the kids or the teacher? <laughs> <laughs> I think both. Oh. What did you do in the revolution? Well, I just joined the Federal Army to fight the rebels off. <coughs> Were you a general in this uprising, uh, not mm, No, Groucho, I joined as a private. But about 30 days later, I was a sergeant major. You must be a natural military leader, huh? How well, come you were promoted so fast? Did everybody else desert? No, Groucho. Did they go over the hill, too, in Mexico? Some envious people say that it was because my uncle was a commanding officer. <laughs> and that's how you jumped from a private to a sergeant major, major in three days, huh? 30 days. 30 days. Well, what took you so long? <laughs> no vacancy. Oh. <laughs> what did you do when you got out of the army? Uh, I joined the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it pretty exciting in the Navy and during the revolution? No, Groucho was kind of quiet. You know, in fact, most of those Mexican revolutions were pretty quiet. Anybody that got shot, you know, was just a mistake. <laughs> You mean they didn't try to shoot anybody? They shot, but not for anybody in particular. Just make noise. You know. <laughs> Just in the general direction. <laughs> uh, how did the revolt uh, finish? That particular one? Well, I was present at the end. In the, when I was on the Navy, there was only one general left up in arms. And uh, they sent us to... They sent the ship I was on, you know, to 
try to get him because he was up in a river, a country that you can reach through a river. How many boats did he have? No, he didn't have any. No. <laughs> what was he doing, swimming around up there? No, I guess he was just uh, thinking what he was going to do next. No. The fight was over anyway. No. Well, then what happened? Well, we went out there and... Uh, you met the enemy? Oh, yes. The admiral found out that the general there was his old, an old, old schoolmate of his. They were schoolmates? Yeah, so we didn't have any fight. We had a fiesta and stuff. <laughs> What was the general's name? It wasn't Gonzalez Gonzalez, was it? No. <laughs> no. Well, that certainly is a pleasant way to end a revolution. Yes. Unload the guns and get the soldiers loaded instead. <laughs> Veta, let's get back to you. I'm interested in how you got into the exploring business. What brought you and Carbeth Wells together? He wanted... As a matter of fact, I was the personal manager of six explorers. Who were these explorers? Oh, uh, the late Martin Johnson, Lord Thomas, Sir Hubert Wilkins, Dr. Roy Chapman Andrews. Well, you've been all over the world, Zeta. What's the wildest place you've ever been to? Los Angeles during the rush hour? Oh, no, Death Island. Death Island? Where mm -hmm. is that? That's an island just about uh, halfway between the Philippines and Formosa. And the most unusual thing, Groucho, is the fact that the women rule the roost. In fact, the women say that the men, well, they look upon all men with contempt. They say they're only fit to furnish children and food. And, and, and you had to go halfway around the world and discover this? <laughs> <laughs> well, you must lead a pretty exciting life. For example, what do you do for relaxation, just, I mean, for oh, the fun of Groucho, it? Oh, Groucho, the fun I have is with my beloved little talking minor bird, Raffles. You have a minor bird? Yes. You mean he's under 21? Oh, no, no. Well, he what is a minor bird? Well, he's the cleverest talking bird in the world. In fact, the American Museum of Natural History gave a uh, press party for Raffles, and they sent out a press notice in which they said that the minor bird has the most human-like voice of any bird in the world. Now, is Raffles a male or a, or a female uh, hen bird? Well, <laughs> Actually, uh, I don't know, and no scientist has ever, ever been able to determine the sex of a minor bird. Well, did it ever occur to you that perhaps no scientist is interested in this particular thing? <laughs> but they are. Our ornithologists are. They'd give oh. anything to be able to determine the sex of minor birds. Well, if this bird is so smart, why doesn't he tell you what sex he is? <laughs> I'm sure if it was a female, he'd have told you long ago. <laughs> and said he'd make a wonderful carrier pigeon because he'd deliver the message and he'd read it as well. That's true. Now, no. Zeta, isn't there any way you, you can tell about this bird? Oh, well, yes. Well, I suppose you could, Groucho. If, if you put him in the cage alone and he happened to lay an egg, then you'd know that he was a ladybird. But, that doesn't uh, mean a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I leave, He's never laid an egg, not even on TV yet. Look, I leave my milkman alone, and he leaves eggs every morning. <laughs> and he's certainly no lady. <laughs> and according to my cook, he's not even a gentleman. Well, well Raffles, the way he's different, he'll uh, answer questions, you Can know. your bird really talk, or are you a ventriloquist? Well, uh, no, I'm not a ventriloquist, and, but, and he can really Where talk. Where is this bird? Well, he's right back here. Well, Would you like to see Drag this vulture out here, and let's see he's what he can do. He's not a vulture, but you wait. He'll talk for you. Just he a will. moment, I'll get him, oh, well, yes? we'll get him out here. Yes, yeah, sure. In the meantime, uh, what do you think of this, Arturo? Huh? By the bird? Did you make a pastry out of this minor bird? Oh, yeah, I could make a crow you, pie. You, <laughs> what's that? I could make a crow pie out a of it. A crow pie, yeah. <laughs> belong to the same family anyway. Yes. Uh, is that the same family? A minor bird and a crow bird? Yeah. Uh. Now, here's oh, Raffles. Is. Raffles, when you heard Groucho, did you laugh? When you heard Groucho on TV last week, did you laugh? Did you laugh, Raffles? Well, Raffles, uh, what are you going to say to Groucho? What do you say? What do you say? Can he do anything else? Sure. <laughs> He's just waking up. He's been asleep. What are you going to... He's got nothing on me. <laughs> what do you say to Groucho? What are you going to say? What do you... Well, what are you going to say to Groucho? What do you say? How do you like the pretty girls? <laughs> now ask me. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, ask me. <laughs> what 
are you going to say to Groucho? What do you say? Hello, darling. Oh, very seductive. Hello, darling. What do you say to Groucho? Say it again. What do you say to Groucho? What do you say? What do you say to Groucho? What do you say? <laughs> What do you say to Groucho? I think he's through for the no, night. No, wait a minute. He is not. I think he wait shot his bow. Listen, 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 listen to him. When if you... I ever saw a pie, a, dog, a bird that was headed for his pie, this is it. <laughs> Best. You say you make a living with this thing? <laughs> Raffles. Can you imagine you if he could talk? Well, you wait just a minute. When you heard Groucho, did you laugh? Okay. Did you laugh? Now, look, you are. I'm willing to eat crow. I'm willing to eat crow. You give it to him and I'll eat crow. He'll talk for you. Ask him what he whistles. G.I.s, ask him if he's in the army. Uh, um... Raffles? Ra waffles. Are you in the army? Uh, are you in the army? He's a little bit sleepy now. Look, Raffles, the oldest audience. Uh, tell him, ask him to whistle Hail, Hail the Gang's All. Uh, would you mind whistling Hail, Hail, the Gang's All here? Say Hail, Hail. Hail, Hail. You see, but you've hey, got the no, food. No, 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 you take give the food. Give me the stuff. All right. Yeah, now say, ask hail, him. hail. Don't give it to him, though. Ask him to whistle it. No, I, I'm going to eat oh. it myself. I'm just going <laughs> to... Well, ask him to whistle it. This is the first bird that won't give me the bird. Are you convinced? That's wonderful. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't come to me. <laughs> Would you all mind standing up? He's going to whistle the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Come on, Star Spangled Banner. No, no. Whistle the Star Spangled Banner. Come on, whistle the Star Spangled Banner. Maybe he could do God Bless whistle America is shorter. Uh, 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 well, look. Uh, well, Zetter, I've had enough. He's, he's amazing. <laughs> you know, we have a duck on this show, and as far as I know, our duck has never had a romance. Oh, really? Do you think that uh, Raffles might be interested? I think he might. Uh, could we have the duck down? Ducky, come on oh, down. Look at this this now, is the duck. Why, Raffles, look now. You'll whistle the Star Spangled Banner for the duck. Hey, I forgot whistle about the it. secret word. Uh, Ducky, <laughs> scram, beat it. I hope you didn't see it. No. <laughs> come down again, duck. Now, don't look at the secret word. Huh? No, I won't. It's now, not fair, now, Manuel. No, you didn't see it out your own, did you? Whistle the Star Spangled Banner, Raffles. Whistle it, darling. Whistle it. It's a little bit late and you're sleepy, but I know you'll do it. Come on. Whistle the Star Spangled Banner. Whistle Star Spangled Banner. Racho, you ask him. He'll do it for you. Whistle God Bless America. <laughs> Star Spangled Banner. Here we've got a bird with a human brain, and on this stool we have a human with a bird brain. <laughs> We're going to give you the $100 just for being so honest and not looking at the sacred word, which was chair. Oh, how nice. Yes, it is. And, but well, you Raffles, deserve it. We can it. use that for grapes, can't we? Yes, you can. Now, you can buy an awful lot of grapes. What are you going to do with your $50? Well, uh, my... <laughs> Boy, I'll be changed once you heard about the $50. talking to you two, and I'd like to go on, but it's time for you to win some money. You're going to play your bet your life, and we want one answer between you on all the questions. You ready? Thank you, Roger. Right? May I just put Raffles yes, okay. off here? Yeah, take the bird take away. Don't get him near Arturo here. <laughs> You're liable to have chicken fricassee. <laughs> Did you ever cook a goose, uh, Arturo? Mm, no. No, you just I'm cook not pastry, a cook. Yeah? Pastry, that's all. Now, you selected world geography. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. And if you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. All right, you ready? One answer between you now. Cathay is the old name for what modern country? You yeah. say that they understand you. China. Better. China, China boy is right. China boy. One right, three more to go, and you'll have $1,000. Santiago is the capital of what country? Chile. Hey, not so loud. I can hear, even I can hear you, and I'm stone dead. <laughs> Halfway to $1,000 now. What is the capital of Nicaragua? Managua. Managua is right. 
One more right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. What is the capital of Australia? Sydney. Oh. oh. Talk it over. Oh, yes, of course. Now, what's the matter with you? Yes, of course. Tell it. Come on, what's the answer? Canberra. You see, he hasn't been around the world, and he knew more than you did, huh? <laughs> and you got four in a row, and you win a thousand dollars. Well, there you are. You see how easy it is? All you need to win money on this show is a, is a Mexican pastry cook, that's all. <laughs> well, how did you learn so much in the bottom of a, of a bakery? Well, I almost finished college. Oh. I, I would have eaten the revolution and come. <laughs> Well, you want $1,000. Now, you can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at 10000 So go over there and sit down and think about it, and thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Groucho. Thank you. <laughs> now, in just one minute, we'll find out whether our last couple will take a chance on winning $10,000. All right, George, let's find out what our last couple has decided to do about the big question. Mrs. Wells and Mr. Morales, would you come in again, please? Now, you've won $1,000 so far. Now, you have a chance to win a lot more, maybe even 10000 Or you can stop here and keep your 1000 If you decide to try for the big money and fail, you wind up with a total of 500 Now, what do you propose to do? Mr. Morales has a boy graduating from high school next week. So, uh, I feel the burden hand for him and for me, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, or if you want to go on, it's... You, may, you, you decide. Let's go. All right, let's go. You through? Well, thanks. <laughs> thank you, Groucho. Despite your decision, thanks for being on thank the show. You very Congratulations. Much. You okay, bet your life. Thank you, Groucho. Remember, your DeSoto dealer sells two great cars the outstanding 170 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 and the beautiful 54 Plymouth, America's best buy low price car. DeSoto, Plymouth, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And don't forget to listen to You Bet Your Life every Wednesday night on radio. George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. September is Child Safety Month, so parents teach them to cross at corners, obey signals, and look before crossing.